Hello again. Welcome back to the Sales on Demand show. It is I, your raven-haired host, actually blonde-haired host, Adam Schneider. This is episode 104. Today we're going to be talking about building an Etsy email list. Um, If you're interested in listening to my latest episode, it had nothing to do whatsoever with business or print on demand. It was strictly all about lockdowns. Uh, That would be the bonus episode that I released just the other day. And I've got some good feedback on it already. And I will not be repeating myself in this episode on that one. I was talking about how the lockdowns have been destroying our society and basically just um, killing people. So one thing that I did kind of forget to add, and I was going to talk about this, but somehow I just forgot or just didn't get to it, but um, I've had a lot of people talking to me and I've been talking about and listening to and reading about the vaccine, the, uh, the, the jab, as some people are calling it. I hate that. Just call it a vaccination. It, that's what it is. It's vaccination. Um, so there's, there's been a, a number of people that have basically cautioned me. You know, they've written to me directly and said, I want to encourage you, don't get the vaccine. Because I straight up said, when the vaccine is available for me, and it's, it's not going to be for probably another month yet, um, I'm almost certainly going to go and get it. I have looked into it thoroughly, and I am convinced that it is both fairly safe and extremely effective. Not that I'm very concerned about getting COVID. I, I'm i not 40 yet, although I am turning 40 this year. Yay! Um, but for me, um, I just... If, if I can avoid getting it, that would be okay. I don't necessarily want to get COVID. Although, I think it would be interesting to see if I already had it. So I'm still kind of hunting around to see if I can get a serological test or an antibody test to see if, you know, maybe I was exposed to COVID and I got it and I recovered because I was really sick last year in February. And I'm fairly sure it was the flu, but yeah, you never know, right? So it would be interesting to see if I've already had COVID because that would give me, I don't know if it's lifetime immunity, but it's pretty, it's pretty good immunity, what they're saying. However, if that's not the case, then I'm probably going to get the vaccine. And what really drives me crazy about this is that everything now that we're doing has suddenly become a political statement. So just me saying, oh yeah, I'm going to probably go get the vaccine. Um, it's almost like I'm siding with the government on all of this nonsense that we've been going through. And I, I, no, no, I'm sorry, but that's just not the case. Look, um, I agree that there are lots of things to be concerned about surrounding the vaccine and talk about vaccine passports and how the government is basically, well, they're not even leading the charge. They're basically the ones, you know, making the vaccine possible. However, in the absence of government, we would still have had created a vaccine. Um, Almost like if we didn't have police, there would still be people who would be available to protect your property, right? If we didn't have government-funded firefighters, do you think that people wouldn't be putting burning buildings out? I mean, it's just absurd to think that without the government, we wouldn't have the vaccine. We would have a vaccine because COVID is real, it exists, and there have been some people who have died uh, died from it. Um, Whether it's 500,000 or it's fewer than that, I don't know. Um, But I've been looking at the data right? I look at data, I look at information, and I I do the best I can to avoid all of this political posturing. Um, And especially these people who are posting, you know, someone's telling me, oh, um, watch this video of a woman who got the vaccine and then she just collapsed. I'm like, your story is great. And it has really touched my heart. But my friend, I don't care about one person's story. I'm looking at the data and six people got blood clots out of 6.8 million who got this 
whatever Johnson and Johnson or Pfizer vaccine, whatever it is, whichever one they're talking about that has the blood clots, want literally less than one out of a million. Um, again, human beings have almost lost the ability to balance risk, right? Um, we have a one in 500 or one in 150 chance of dying in a car. And people will be like, I don't need to wear a seatbelt. You know, I can drive this rusty, this rusty old, you know, uh, what kind of car? I mean, whatever car you've got that's uh, got no safety. I mean, my, my Corolla is pretty much a death trap. I'm not going to say it's a death trap, but it's not the most safe car. But I'm not concerned that I'm going to die tomorrow driving my Corolla because I do the best I can to mitigate the risks. And so if somebody offers me this vaccine, I'll probably take it because a one in a million chance is statistically zero. It's statistically zero. I, I mean, there's you literally have a better chance of being struck by lightning than you do of getting a blood clot after getting this vaccine. So I'm just, uh, I don't know, the, the whole thing around everybody being so afraid on both sides, right? So it's not, the people who are not afraid of COVID are suddenly afraid of the vaccine. And I'm like, can you just not be an idiot? Look at the data. Look at the information that we have. If the information's wrong, fine. Then if we find out that it was wrong later, I'll take the I'll take the L on that. But as far as we can tell now, this is a relatively safe and effective vaccination, and I'm going to get it. Okay, so that's just how it is. And and I, I've told people who are my friends, I'm like, don't don't try to, don't tell me all of this nonsense about don't get the vaccine and how it's un not approved by the FDA. I don't care about the FDA. The FDA approves all kinds of nonsense that shouldn't be approved, and the FDA won't approve vitamin C. So, I mean, that tells you a lot about the FDA. Anyway, so I am actually feeling pretty good. I kind of got out my feelings of anger last episode. I really needed that, by the way. But um, it is right now very quiet on the marketplace, and that is very strange. Um, by this time last year, we were seeing a pretty decent spike in traffic, more, mostly because, you know, everybody was locked in their homes and actually staying home. Um, so Canadians are still locked in their homes, but Americans are, by and large, I mean, with the exception of the states that locked down and are seeing an increase in COVID cases, which is, um, if it weren't the, for the fact that one of those places is Alberta, um, I would laugh at that, but it is, Alberta is seeing more COVID cases and we are locked down. We never ever stopped being locked down, but Texas and, um, Florida and all of those states, they are, they have ended their mandates and their cases are dropping. So those people are going out and they're starting to do stuff. And I'm assuming that they're not shopping online. They're shopping in person, which is great. Um, it'll probably be a relatively quieter Mother's Day, but it'll probably keep going through till Father's Day. So I'm not very concerned about that. Um, what I'm really focused on is getting some new and interesting types of designs in my store. It's It's been a strange year, but there's lots of potentially good ideas to create designs around. And I, I found one the other day. I saw a meme online, and on Twitter actually, and I, I grabbed it and made a design from it, threw it on a t-shirt. I made 11 sales on that in just 24 hours. It's, it's still selling. Now, it's one of these things that's probably going to have a lifespan. It's, it's going to be maybe a week. But, I mean, if you can make a thousand dollars off of a meme that's pretty good it's really good so you want to learn how to do this i teach people how to sell print on demand i am currently looking at doing a four week boot camp for subscribers both new and old if you are currently a subscriber this is going to be coming to you real soon i'm going to be creating uh like a four week training program to get you from wherever you are right now to, you know, uh, a higher level, getting you more designs listed, um, getting you new platforms to sell on, 
It's going to be four weeks long. You're going to see a video every week. That's and it's going to be you know accountability, encouragement, and training. So you can uh, sign up for that at printondemand.com forward slash a z. So let's talk about sales to date. Um, I like to include this information just so you know how things are going for me. Um, so I'm just not telling you that I'm I'm doing well and not proving it. So Amazon has kind of slowed down a bit, um, and I, I suspect that is because of the uh, the change in buying behavior, which we have seen. Everybody is noticing this, by the way. I've I've talked to probably five, six other major sellers, and they're all noticing a very sharp decline in sales from last year. However, um, I'm still doing better than I did last year, and I expect that to continue. So I've got $9,500 in sales on Amazon and about $6,000 on Etsy year to date. I'm up about 28% on Amazon, and I'm over 100% higher year over year on Etsy, and that is continuing. Etsy is actually catching up to Amazon, which is kind of interesting. Um, I've always been very good at selling on Amazon, but Etsy, I was a little weak, but now Etsy is catching up. And we are, of course, going to talk about how to increase your sales on Etsy by using a email list. So I, I, chatted, I talked about this a little bit in one of the last episodes, crypto, and a couple people were asking about it, um, and I, I thought I would share my results with my crypto hopper. So I I didn't really share a lot of the details about this crypto hopper, but it is an interesting um it's a it's a program. It's a bot and I put $3500 in my crypto hopper and it's just slowly creeping up. And it seems slow because I check it like 3 or 4 times a day just out of curiosity. And just an hour ago it was at $4,130, and now it's back down a bit. So the volatility is still it's still really volatile. But overall, and as an aggregate, I am up 7, no, 12.69% in about four weeks. So it's a little less than 15%. And that's just an estimate because I can't remember exactly how much money I put in here to begin with. So it's... um. It's going well, and I'm considering this to be basically another income stream because this is significant. Like 12% in four weeks is a significant increase, and that's compounding on itself, right? So you put the money in, and it just starts trading for you. So I'm using a crypto hopper called CryptoHopper.com. I'm probably I've applied for an affiliate link for that, so if uh, if I manage to get approved for that, you'll see a link in the description, and you can sign up for that, and I get a little cut. It doesn't cost you anymore, but I, I really love this system, and it's it's kind of fun. Um, there's a little bit of a learning curve on it, and it's stuff that is good to learn. I mean, you should probably know something about crypto because it's uh, it's almost replacing stocks as the investment of choice for many people. It's really interesting. So... CryptoHopper.com is the site. Um, you can click the link in the description. If I can get an affiliate link, it'll be there. But otherwise, uh, give it a shot. See how uh, it works out for you. So let's talk about building an Etsy email list. Right on. So wh what the heck is an email list and why do I want one? Uh, well, this is fun. Of course, being 40 years old, I existed at the beginning, the dawn of the internet, if you will, when um, Al Gore himself, you know, went into the tomb of Bill Gates, when Bill Gates rose from the dead and created the internet when he came back to life. And Al Gore said, let there be internet. And there was internet. No, I, I just made that up. I don't know who invented the internet, but I'm sure Al Gore tells himself that story every night. But anyway, I remember the beginning of email and the very first email address that I ever created is the same one I'm using today, uh, ironically, which is very strange, but whatever. I mean, 
It's an email address. Um, for many people over the age of 30, your, the email address that you're using now is probably embarrassing. <laughs> so, you know, I do have multiple email addresses, but my main one is just something I created when I was like 16 years old. But anyway, email has survived as a means of communication and it's not going away. So unlike social media platforms um, where, you know, MySpace came and MySpace went. I don't know what MySpace is now. It's It's gone. So if you had a MySpace account, uh, you basically wasted your time building that. You know, and then there's other types of blogging sites and, and communication media like, um, well, there used to be something called ICQ. And I'm really, really dating myself here with this. But, uh, man, ICQ was like a messenger system. But you could only talk to people that had ICQ. Um, and then there was, I don't know, it's just one of those things that happened and then it and then it was gone. But email has survived and the great thing about email is that you don't need to have a Hotmail account to contact somebody who has a Hotmail account. Email addresses are global. Anybody with an email address can contact anyone else. Companies use them. Businesses use them to contact customers. You have to have one to buy online. So it's a great way to communicate with customers. And if you build an email list, you have a permanent way to get in touch with people who either have bought from you in the past or might be willing to buy from you in the future. And, and it is basically the easiest and cheapest way to, to market to people. I mean, building an email list is like e-commerce 101. If, if anybody is listening to me and you've been involved in e-commerce for any amount of time, you've probably heard about email lists. But what you didn't know is that you can build an email list even selling on marketplaces. So marketplaces being Amazon and Etsy. Most people don't do this. I mean, I, I would say the vast, vast majority of people don't do this on either Etsy or Amazon. Uh, there are a lot of private label sellers who will do this on Amazon and we'll talk about how you can do that on Amazon. There is only one way that you can build an email list through Amazon, but it is possible. It's a little bit more difficult than doing it through Etsy. So the email list is really simple. It's a bunch of people who have consented. Okay, this is the key word, consented. They have to actually physically consent to receive emails from you. You don't, It's not just that they've bought from you before. It's that they bought from you or they have consented to give you their email address and they actually have to click, yes, I want to receive emails from you. So it is consent-based. And if it wasn't, then it's spam, right? Spam is illegal. At least in Canada, it's illegal. And, uh, and nobody likes spam. In fact, most people, when they get spam emails, they... They, they turn their head to the heavens and they say, God, please send a meteor to the home of that spammer and, and send him to the core of the earth. Amen. Um, I know I do. And especially if I get like, a, like these scam calls, <laughs> if I don't have time to mess with them, I just curse them. So nobody likes spam and it doesn't work. But if people consent to join your email list, you can market to them. And since you own the email list, meaning that it's yours, it's not like Etsy gives it to you. Amazon doesn't give you the email list. You are building this from the ground up. So you you get to do all the work. That's, that's where the hard part comes in, is that you get all the benefits, but you also have to do all the work. Now, it's not all that much work. It is a little bit more work than just listing on, on Etsy and trying to get sales through organic traffic. Now this is something that I would not recommend doing until you have you know a fair number of sales under your belt. And and I put out this number to some students the other day. I said, you know, think about this when you have 100 sales. So if you've got 100 sales or even if you have 50 sales, you're starting to get the idea of how print on demand works. You've got products that people are buying. You you kind of get it, right? If you got 100 sales, that means that you've achieved some success. You've made, you know, $2,000. That's, that's not a small accomplishment. And this is the time where you start 
thinking about building and scaling. And one of the, the best ways to scale is by marketing to people who have already purchased from you or people who visit your store and might be interested in purchasing from you. So let's talk about how to, to market to these people, how to get them to join your email list. Well, I'm sure if you've listened to my podcast, you guys are well aware because I talk about it literally twice every every show. I talk about my email list, right? And I give you a link, salesondemandshow.com forward slash AZ. Jump on my email list. I send out, I don't send out very many emails. You know, they always contain good tips. So that's basically what you're going to do on Etsy. The same thing. You're going to create a link and it's fairly easy to do. There's lots of email providers. The one that I use is MailChimp. So, and it's free to sign up. Um, I actually use the free version of MailChimp because um, you you can use it for free until you reach, um, it used to be 2,000 subscribers, and I believe now it's less than that, might be 500, but I mean, it's going to take you some time to build up to 500 subscribers, and uh, there's going to be some work involved in the meantime, but this is, there's there's two ways to do this, so this is all Etsy, we're going to talk about Etsy first, so the first way is by using something called Etsy Pattern. So Etsy Pattern is a subscription service where Etsy actually gives you the ability to use a domain name. So instead of your store being etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash blah, 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 whatever, whatever your shop name is, you instead get a domain that would probably be something like um, www.awesomegiftsforyourmom.com I don't know if that's exactly how the pattern works but you get a custom domain name and you pay $10 a month so there is a cost involved but in addition to getting this custom domain name you get the ability to put a email list that is the, the newsletter sign up link basically on every single page of your Etsy store. Now this is what I would prefer, and this is probably what I'm going to do when I start my Etsy email list. $10 a month is nothing, um, especially since you can get a MailChimp account for free, and you can just connect it right to your Etsy store. So the ability to drop this, this sign-up link on every single page of your store means that every time a customer visits any of your listings, they visit your, your store homepage, they visit um, or they get your emails, if they purchase from you, they're going to see this sign up link and it just goes straight from Etsy to MailChimp. So that I think is the best way to do it. Um, and, and this is the way to, to build a brand. Like if you wanna build an Etsy store that is a brand rather than just a hobby, then you probably want to sign up for Etsy Pattern. I haven't done this um, because I I don't know. <laughs> it's just something I haven't gotten around to doing yet. But you know, now that I'm starting to get some serious sales on Etsy, I think this is the next step for me. So I'm going to be doing this. And of course, I already use Mailchimp, so I'll probably just create an additional Mailchimp account just with a different email address, and I'll just connect them. And I'll start sending subscribers from your Etsy store, my Etsy store, to MailChimp. Now here is, now you, you can do this without having pattern. And here's how you do it, right? So when you sign up for MailChimp or whatever, I mean, I recommend MailChimp because it's free, but you can use, there's ConvertKit, there's Aweber, um, there's, there's a lot of different email service providers. Most of the ones that I just mentioned, they have a, you know, small monthly cost of maybe $15, which is not really that much, um, especially considering that you, you can basically use these email lists forever and ever and ever. So it's, it's basically just free marketing forever, um, as long as people stay on your list, because of course people can unsubscribe from your list. And they often will. So you've got to be continuously building this. So 
The first thing, of course, that you do sign up for your email service provider and you create a landing page where people are going to go to sign up. And now here's the thing. People are not just going to give you their email. Okay, this, it's not how it works. Nobody is going to voluntarily say, yeah, I want you to email me. Well, I mean, some people might, but most people won't because there's no incentive. They don't want spam emails from random people on the internet. So the way that you're going to entice them is by giving them a discount code in exchange for their email. So on all of your, um, in your descriptions, and this is very easy to do on Etsy, you are going to create a line that says, want to get this product for 20% off? Click here. Now this, there's actually two, two benefits to doing this. Number one, it gets people on your email list. And number two, it incentivizes them to purchase the product, right? So you're offering a discount code in exchange for their email, and you're also incentivizing them to buy the product. So the most valuable part of that is not the, the purchase that they might make. They may or may not make the purchase, right? But you got their email. So now they're interested. And um, if, you've, if you've ever had any experience with Shopify stores or WooCommerce stores, this is, I mean, you have to do this. You have to be um, capturing interested people, especially if they don't buy. So people who run Shopify stores will create all kinds of elaborate, you know, back-end systems to try and get more people to buy the product. It's not just send an advertisement out and people land on the page, maybe buy the product, maybe don't. Um, in order to make the most money off of these things, you have to really try and capture these people. So this is a great strategy for doing that. Then you create what's called an initial campaign. So this is what people will get when they first sign up for your, your uh, newsletter or your email list. And um, sorry, if you hear that noise in the background, that's my tactical hamster. He's probably chewing on something he's not supposed to. So we'll just pretend that he's not doing that. Anyway, so yeah, so your initial campaign of emails is what people are going to first get. This tells them a little bit about yourself. You want to be honest. You want to tell people who you are. Make this personal and make it fun, right? So you're going to send an email that says, hey, thanks for subscribing. Of course, you want to include the discount code in that email. But you also want to tell them a little bit of something that kind of hooks them, right? So you don't want to just make an email that says, thanks for signing up. Here, use this code, um, dutyhead100, to get your 20% discount. Thanks, Adam. Uh, you want to, to make this engaging. Uh, there are lots of people who are really good at this. Um, there are lots of people who, who are not very good at this. So you don't want to be salesy or insincere. Use your personality. If you're just sort of a subdued person, try not, don't be like really overly excited. You know, if, if your email looks like it was coming from someone trying to sign someone up for a multi-level marketing program, you've gone overboard. But on the other hand, if your email makes people want to take their computer and throw it away, you've not gone far enough. So be authentic. Tell people about you, something interesting, something fun, and about your store. You know, what do you like to create? What's your theme? You know, do you have any interests? Do you like to create products about jobs? Um, do you like to create products about mom? Now, here's the thing is you don't want to be too specific with this is because you're going to get lots of different types of people. So you want to be more broad. You know, everybody's got a mother, everybody's got a father. So focus on family-related stuff like that. And, of course, give them the discount code and then redirect them back to your store with a link in the email. Right, So you don't want to just be like, okay, here's your discount code. Now go ahead and find my store again. No, no, no. You put the link in there. Here's, here's back to the store. Now go ahead and buy. So that's going to get you 
um, hopefully people signing up for your email list. So um, here's how you keep people on your email list is you've got to email people every week or every couple of weeks. I mean, for for the email list I have for this podcast, I actually probably don't email enough. And that's mostly because, you know, sometimes I just, I just get a little bit um, lazy, to be honest with you. But, you know, cultivate that relationship and send out some emails. Not every email has to be a sale. Sometimes you're just sending an email to talk about something interesting that you're doing, um, talk about your store, talk about what's coming up, and just sort of generate some interest from the people on your email list. Don't be salesy and don't be weird, but you can be fun. It's okay to be fun, but don't be like creepy. If uh, if that makes any sense to you all out there. And I know that, you know, there's a line between fun and creepy, but don't cross that line. Um, and this means that you've got to be including new designs, right? So you've got to have new products listed in your store all the time because you're trying to build this up. You're trying to generate some interest in your store. And this way, if people buy from you or they're interested in you, you may not get the sale right away, but maybe that person, you know, over Christmas, they're going to see something that they like. Maybe you're going to take advantage of a trend over Christmas and you can be like, hey, listen, you've heard about this trend. I've got products for this trend. Last last year in 2020, it was like um, the the 2020 stink, stank, stunk, and there was the picture of the Grinch holding a mask. That was a huge trend. And then there was the whole pandemic theme thing. So this is where you're going to include some of your new products that sort of cover a broad trend. And you definitely want it to be more broad and not very specific. On the other hand, though, if you have a store that you've built up around a certain theme, and, and this is an advanced technique, of course, you can build a store around weddings. And this, if you're doing a themed store, let's say you've got a main store and a second store on Etsy, you're allowed to have more than one store, by the way. You just can't put the same product in two different stores. So what you want to do is your second store will be some kind of theme, and then you're going to build an email list around that theme. You're going to send out content that appeals to the people who love whatever it is, motorcycles, I don't know, tap dancing, whatever your theme is. Um, politics is probably um, a theme. Um, so that's something to, to talk about. And then you're just going to keep messaging people every week or couple of weeks. Once in a while, throw in, hey, I've got a new product for you guys. Check it out. And this will give you some information. So you will get feedback from people. And people will be like, okay, I like this product, I'm going to buy it. Or they might tell you, I don't like this product, but here's a suggestion to make it better. And you definitely want that. So this is an excellent way to find out what people actually want in the market. So that's really the gist of it, is that you just you keep building that up, you refine the emails, build your list. Now the benefits of building an email list are many. We've talked about some of them, but here is one of the big benefits that I didn't talk about is that let's suppose someday you get kicked off of Etsy. It is rare, but it, it can happen, right? So, you know, if you get a copyright strike or a trademark strike, there's, there's phrases out there that are trademarked that really nobody knows about. And let's say that you make a design based on that phrase and you know, the trademark owner comes and you lose your store. If you've got an email list, you can build a new store and use your email list to just build your store up, to just instantly get more customers. So that's a strategy. It basically, um, it's basically a backup plan. Also, if you build your own website, like a Shopify website, and you're like, okay, well, I want to get some customers shopping on my Shopify website or your, your own website. You can use your email list to start sending people to, the, to that store. So the last thing I'll talk about here, and um, 
you know, okay, so I talked about crypto. I've got my, just wanted to tell you guys this because I was looking at it while I was talking here. So um, in, in the 20 minutes that I've been talking, my crypto bot has made me 50 bucks. <laughs> so, of course, it could go down $50 too, but it's it's really crazy to watch this thing. It's It's entertaining. It's kind of like watching fish, but the fish are spitting out, you know, dollar bills. Anyway, so let's talk about Amazon. How can you build this email list on Amazon? Well, here's the thing. Amazon will not let you put links in your description. They won't let you drop links in your shop announcement. Um, Amazon is very strict about this. You cannot use customer emails or customer contact information. So how on earth could you possibly build an email list on Amazon? Well, it is possible, and the way to do this is FBA. So this this actually requires one of two things. Number one is that you contact your supplier. So if you've got a supplier, and I have a few suppliers that I give away in my discount in my training course, and um, you're going to tell your supplier, "Hey, here is um, here is a card." So you can actually put a physical card or something into the product packaging for your FBA. And it's going to be exactly the same kind of thing. You know, the customer's going to pull it out and say, thank you for buying the product. We'd, lo we'd love you to, to come back and check out what we've got for a discount code. On future purchases, visit this link. So you're going to actually put a link on there. And it's got to be something that's short, right? Because this is an actual physical piece of paper, and you want people to actually click on the link. So it's not as effective, obviously, because it's a physical piece of paper. But it is it is a way to do it. Now, it means that you have to have a supplier that can do it for you. So there are basically, I know one supplier that can do it. And of course, if you are printing your own, as your own supplier, you can easily do this. I mean, it is dead simple. You just basically, in the box, you just drop it inside the mug, right? So you're including the link to your email list, offering the same discount. And uh, I don't think I mentioned what kind of discount I recommend. I would recommend no more than 20%. But 20% is pretty good. You, you could offer 10%. Um, see how it works. And if, if you don't get very many signups, then I would go with 20%. Because really, you're building the email list. And, and if you almost have to give away the product, that's that's okay. I mean, you're, you're still making some profit. But really, the value comes with getting those emails. And believe me, um, internet marketers, you know, they will pay a lot of money to get emails. Right? So the the people who do internet marketing, you know, they're... they're selling courses and stuff like that, they they will oftentimes pay several dollars, you know, out of their own pocket for for someone's email. So it is really valuable to build that email list because you can keep marketing to these people over and over and over and it costs you nothing to do it. So if you're giving away a 20% discount to get their email, well, I mean, it's worth it. It's worth it to do that. But try with a 10% discount first, maybe 15, see how it works out. So I will be probably putting this into play relatively soon here. And uh, I will report my results to you fine folks. But with that, we have reached the end of this. Well, it went a little long, almost 40 minutes. But it has been lovely, and I love you all. Please leave me a comment. And if you love this podcast, if I've really touched your heart, and uh, made you scream or laugh or cry or chuckle mildly, consider leaving a review on my uh, on YouTube or where, however you're watching this. Leave me a review, especially on iTunes. It really helps the algorithm. It uh, feeds the algorithm. And we all know how that works, right? you got to feed the algorithm to get more people. And it really helps, and I'd love to hear your feedback. So we'll talk to you guys next week. Cheers.